Hello students, welcome to the course on Hydrology EVE 301 offered to civil engineering students at College of Science and Technology. I am Kirtan Adhikari, faculty at CST. See you in the course. Let's continue our discussion on precipitation. In our previous lecture, we discussed how to measure precipitation. Today, we shall discuss on how to prepare and analyze precipitation data. As we have discussed, precipitation data coming from a station is just a point data, whereas storm covers a very large area. Since the aerial extent of a storm is very large, single gauge measurement is not the representative of the storm over the entire catchment. Thus, a network of gauges are required to study the storm over the catchment. According to World Meteorological Organization, one station for every 100 to 250 km square is recommended for mountainous regions like Bhutan. Likewise, IS standard also recommends the same value. Moving on, now we can ask a question to ourselves. How many stations are required in a catchment to estimate the mean precipitation? So according to IS standard, it says number of sta uh, station required in a catchment is equal to this expression whereby CV is the coefficient of variation and E is the allowable degree of error in estimation of mean precipitation. And CV is given by the expression 100 times uh, standard deviation divide, divided by the mean precipitation and we know that uh, this is the expression to calculate the standard deviation. One thing to note here is this 100 is actually coming from this allowable degree. Usually the allowable degree comes in percentage. So divided by 100, this 100 is taken up here. So you may have to take into consideration while solving a numerical. Now with this, let's try to solve a numerical on the adequacy of rain gauge stations over a catchment. A catchment, in a, a catchment has seven rain gauge stations. In a year, the annual rainfall recorded by a gauges are as follows. Now number A, determine the standard error in estimation of mean uh, rainfall in existing set of rain gauges. And number B, for a 5% error in estimation of mean rainfall, Calculate the minimum number of additional stations required to be established in the catchment. So I have solved for part B. You can try for part A because part A is very easy. That's why I attempted part B. So to solve this, first let's find the parameters. To find the parameters, I have calculated the standard deviation to be 22.545. And please be mindful that we should always keep three decimal places. So henceforth, let's make uh, this agreement that for all the calculations, we shall use three decimal places. And coefficient of variation, as I have said already, it is 100 times standard deviation divided by average precipitation. Average precipitation is the average of all these values, which is 17.285, okay? Coefficient of variation is 17.285. Likewise, total number of stations required for at 5% error is here we just simply put 17.285 divided by 5 note that divide this 5 percentage which there should be divided by 100 it has already been taken up so you simply put the error here 5 so which is 11.9 and we can approximate that to be 12 so there are already 7 gauges so how many additional is required so 12 12 is coming from here that much is required minus 7 is equal to 5 so in this catchment 5 more additional gauges is required but for part a determine the standard error so existing what is the existing error in estimation the mean precipitation here this value remains same right this value remains the same here you put the uh, you know the value of n that is 7 and e is unknown so from this expression you can calculate the error Okay, let's move on. Now, moving on to the preparation of rainfall data. 
Before starting any form of analysis with precipitation data, we must check for two things in the data set. That is, check for continuity and check for consistency. Continuity means checking for missing data. Okay, missing data. If there are missing data in the series, we must apply any of the following technique to make a realistic approximation of the missing data. So we have two methods that is simple arithmetic mean method and normal ratio method. Simple arithmetic mean method is just taking out an average whereas normal ratio method is we divide by entire equation by the normal precipitation. Okay. And check for consistency means we are checking for the quality of the rainfall data and this is done through a curve known as double mass curve. So let's discuss on this. Let's first discuss on why there can why there will be inconsistency in recording the uh, rainfall by a station. If uh, the rain gauge is shifted to a new location then there could be some inconsistency. If the neighborhood of the station undergoes a marked changes for instance if there was a rainfall station uh, situated in some locality and there was small tree in 20 years the tree can grow to a very uh, it, it can go to a massive height right and that might obstruct the rainfall so because of this there can be you know the station there can be inconsistency likewise change in the ecosystem due to calamities such as forest fire and landslide occurrence of observational error for from a certain date this can also introduce inconsistency and to do the test, we plot the double mass curve. So to plot a double, class, ma, double mass curve, what we do is, I have listed down the procedure. So problematic station data is isolated. If you have a doubt for a station at Funseling may be consistent or may not be consistent, so we just isolate that. Collect 5 to 10 neighboring station data. So we also need 5 to 10 neighboring station data. It is recommended that there should be at least 10 but in case of Bhutan we don't have 10 neighboring stations so 5 to 10 at annual monthly or seasonal scale arrange the data in a reverse chronological order which means last record has to be the first entry calculate cumulative precipitation of the station here I am referring as station X means the problematic station starting from the latest record likewise accumulated value of average of neighboring station is also computed so this, this the i'm referring this as sigma px and sigma p average okay px for the station and p a v for the average and now we plot four versus five so likewise we get a chart the chart is cumulative average of neighboring stations and cumulative average of the station so if the station if the data of the station under the study was consistent there will be a perfect straight line okay however if there is a break the values tend to deviate okay the values tend to deviate from the main trend line the value in red okay this values indicate that the station has station recorded less rainfall compared to neighboring station and the trend along blue dot the trend along the blue dot if the if the deviation was in this fashion then it denotes that the station of this station was recording higher rainfall than the neighboring station in both the cases correction must be applied on the data for the station now see let's Take a condition of this now it has deviated in this fashion okay so it it should have been in this line but it somehow it got deviated now correction must be applied so here it forms a triangle right these there are two triangle one is big triangle another one is small triangle so these are similar triangle so using the property of similar triangle you can find a coefficient with which if you multiply this value then you will get this value can be corrected so that it will reach up here. 
So this is the double mask curve technique. Now, once we do with the preliminary data cleaning, it's time we discuss about representation of rainfall data. Okay, there are five methods to represent precipitation data in a graphical form. One is the heatograph. Heatograph is the intensity versus time. Okay, it is a column graph where in y direction there is intensity and in x direction there is time. Mass curve. Mass curve is the cumulative value. Okay, cumulative uh, with time. Now at 10 a.m. if there is 5 centimeter of rain at 11 if there is again 5 centimeter of rain so at 11 we just add the previous value and it becomes 10 so that is cumulative value third one is moving average in it is a statistical method to compute average on a moving window of of 3 or 5 or any odd number the chart shows the temperature data of the world from 1961 to 1990 along with the moving average curve in blue so this is the moving average so this is also a way now next is the fourth one is in fact a mathematical way of representing rainfall data it's known as depth area curves okay or depth area duration curve we also call it as dad curve depth of precipitation of a storm is related to the area of its coverage and the duration of the storm depth area duration analysis is carried out to obtain a curve relating the depth of the rainfall area of its coverage and the duration of the storm a DAD curve is a graphical representation of the gradual decrease of the precipitation with the progressive increase of the area of the coverage of the storm away from the storm center for a given duration taken as the third parameter. So that is a, is a three dimensional curve, curve in fact, the depth in y axis, area in x axis and each curve represents the duration for instance two day storm one day storm and the equation that represents this curve is given by the average depth is equal to the maximum depth at the center times exponent raised to minus k times area raised to some coefficient n so k and n are the coefficients now one question comes how to compute the value of k and n from observed data so if you have the observed data let's discuss how to calculate the value of k and n so from this equation if i divide p naught throughout so i get this expression so i'm going to apply so apply the logarithmic here so when you apply the logarithmic here it's going to be p bar by p naught ln of p bar by p naught is equal to ln of this expression will be minus k a raised to n and again if you apply the logarithmic so it will is going to be ln of ln p naught over p bar here i am taking minus this side okay because ln of minus values does not exist so if i take this minus here it's going to be right now it is ln p minus ln p naught right if i take minus this side or multiply with minus throughout it's going to be ln p naught minus ln p which is also equal to ln of p naught over p p bar or average p so double uh, logarithmic is equal to ln k plus n ln a so look closely to this equation this is in a form of y is equal to mx plus c this has to be a straight line on a normal chart paper okay so we'll discuss this more on this with the numerical and the fifth one is the intensity duration frequency curve a knowledge of maximum intensity of a rainfall of a specific return period of duration equal to critical time of concentration is of considerable practical importance in evaluating peak flows related to hydraulic structures 
intensity duration flow curves are graphical representation of relationship of three parameters these are intensity of the storm duration of the storm and the return period now new term comes here return period we'll discuss more on this term in next section okay and to represent this family of curve the equation is given here where i is the intensity t is the return period d is the duration and the rest are d uh, x a and n are the coefficients that depend from place to place these curves are extremely important to develop design storm for computing the design flood in the hydrological design of major structures such as dams so these are very very important now let's continue our discussion on methods to find mean precipitation over an area there are three types three methods to compute mean precipitation these are arithmetic mean method thiessen polygon method and isohydral method now arithmetic mean method is you just collect the all the station within the catchment and you find the average of these three stations like here the precipitation at a precipitation at b precipitation at c divided by 3 would give us the average precipitation this method is uh, very rudimentary okay i suggest you go for a uh, better method such as thiessen polygon method or isohydral method if it is available now thiessen polygon method in this method it is assumed that at any point in the watershed the rainfall is the same as that at the nearest guess gauge so the depth recorded at a given gauge is applied out to a distance halfway to the next station in any direction the relative weight of each gauge is determined by from the corresponding proximity area in the catchment these polygons are constructed by bisecting the lines joining the adjacent gauges to let me explain you how to construct this thiessen polygon consider all the stations within the catchment and stations that are located very close to your catchment and one advantage of this method is you can also include stations that are very close to catchment but it is not within the catchment so once we have selected all the stations joins the join the station to form a triangular network so once you join all the stations it forms a triangular network right now bisect these triangles to construct thiessen polygon now let's see here now we have already joined all these stations now let's bisect when i bisect this i'm going to create this see with the green line i'm bisecting all the sides of the triangle uh triangle right so by bisecting then i get colored polygon around the station so see any station i have uh, highlighted with a different color so these these you know these highlighted colored are the thiessen polygons now to find the average precipitation on entire catchment we uh, use this equation whereby we multiply the precipitation multiply by the the uh, area okay then we add to precipitation on this location with this area right likewise we do it for all and then we divide it by a sometimes it is also done in other way like instead of doing this method some authors they use uh, they find the weightage weightage is nothing but ai divided by a is the weight weightage okay so that coefficient you multiply with the station that's also okay you can apply any of this method it's okay 